Welcome everyone to my Summon Raging Spirits Necromancer for 3.22 Ancestor League. In this video I just wanted to talk about the first 10 days of the league and how I was able to progress from days 1 to 10 and then some tips and tricks that should be able to help you along the way, uh, what gear upgrades I did and, and how I got to where my build is now. As you probably saw in the showcase, it is pretty strong, pretty tanky, very fast, and can speed clear maps pretty good. And as far as investment so far, at today's prices, at the time of recording this video, I probably have maybe 12 Divine invested, so not too bad. So depending on how much money you have and if you're league starting this character, days 1 through 4, you're probably going to be playing as the fire-based Summon Raging Spirits, which is definitely less powerful than the poison base, but it's, it's still pretty okay for a while. When you're leveling fire based summon raging spirits, if you can come across this item, a Sid Breath and Power Amulet, that is the best thing you can possibly find. I actually found two of them in the campaign, so they're actually quite common. The reason this is so good is that it gives you additional flat cold damage, which is really powerful in the beginning. Now the benefit from this amulet will start, start to drop off around Act 6 or so, and as soon as you start running Anger, you're going to want to get rid of this amulet because it's not going to help you anymore, and just, just run Anger no amulet, and then you'll be fine at that point. So on, on day one, I was able to complete the campaign and I got done with a few maps and then I picked up on day two to start progressing my Atlas. At the end of day two, I made a ton of progress Atlas-wise, but not a ton of progress gear-wise, simply because I just wasn't finding currency. I actually, so far in this league, have found one single Divine Orb drop and everything else I've made has just been through currency making strategies, which I'll actually talk a little bit about later in this video. So at the end of day two, I think I ended at about level 88, around maybe tier 13 maps, and then I picked up on day three, and I finished my atlas out on day three. I got to, I think, level 91 and tier 16 maps. I will say that at tier 16 maps, fire-based summon raging spirits started feeling extremely bad. So I knew it was a high priority to get into poison base, so I saved up enough currency to purchase a severed in sleep. So on day four is when I finally switched over to poison based summon raging spirits, and there's a couple things you have to do to do that. Obviously you need the severed in sleep. This is going to be your first big power spike. You're going to get level 25 envy, which gives flat chaos, which is great, and then 60% chance to inflict withered on hit. And because summon raging spirits hit so fast and so hard, you are going to, you should have max weather stacks all the time on enemy, especially for single target. However, to make poison based SRS work, you have to get 100% chance to poison. So you can achieve that a couple ways. The first is a chance to poison gem. That's what you'll do at first. That gives a flat 40% chance to poison. And then you'll want to pick up a darkness enthroned. So when I got this, the prices were pretty insane, like multiple divines. So I was only able to get a 60% increased effect of socket jewels. Darkness Enthroned, and I got two 15% chance to poison uh, jewels. Minions have 15% chance to poison enemies on hit. So I think I got 40% chance to poison from the from the gem, and then here it was 29% plus another 60% on top of that, which was maybe I think 48. So plus the 40 was 88, and then I just got a 12% chance to poison jewel, which I put on my tree, and then that was 100%. It's good to go. And just that alone at least doubled my damage, so the build started feeling really good and tier 16 maps started feeling really no problem. Days 5 and 6 for me was mostly just spent with the same gear, just Severed in Sleep and Poison SRS, and just completing my Atlas, just trying to get all the maps completed, doing all the unique maps, working on my Void Stones, and just in general generating more currency. My next big upgrade at that point was the Covenant Chest. This is where you get your huge second power spike. This is another probably 2 to 3x the damage, depending on what your setup is. And that's because it supports your 6 link with level 29 added chaos, which is just a massive amount of flat chaos, which we love in this build. So I think when I purchased this chest, it was about 8 divine, and by the time you watch this video, the price will have fallen quite a bit. And so you should be able to pick up one for maybe 4 or 5 now, so that'll be good. Days 7, 8, 9 for the most part has just been generating currency, and I've been doing so by doing the League Mechanic, Trial of the Ancestors, that's been working out pretty good. I found a couple pretty expensive things, but mostly I've just been running Sanctum. Summon Raging Spirits is very good with Sanctum, and with a little practice you can get really good at it. So Sanctum is a lot harder this time around, a lot of the rooms are harder, the traps are harder, and the whole thing just feels a lot harder than before. 
A couple small upgrades I picked up along the way is I got a helmet with plus one to all minion skill gems. This can definitely be improved. Obviously plus two would be a lot better. I was able to find these boots just on the ground, triple res with 30% movement speed and a good bit of life. So that was pretty excellent. Honestly, my shield and my gloves and my ring are kind of trash. I could definitely spend a lot more there. I've probably only spent a couple of chaos a piece here. So that's kind of nice. For the amulet, Jinx Juju is pretty good. I, I went with Testudo for the for the anoint, just because it, it feels good. Recover 30 life when you block an additional block attack damage, so that's pretty nice. But you can definitely allocate other stuff. Some people are opting for Death Attunement, which will give you another Spectre if you want to run three Spectres, so you can definitely do that. Speaking of Spectres, so there's a lot of options for Spectres. The primary two that people are running, including myself, is Arena Master and the Pale Seraphim. If you need these Spectres, you can go to Global 6666, which is Gazzy TV's channel, and you can get Spectres from there. You just, just say, looking for Arena Master, and somebody will invite you, and then you can go desecrate in their hideout and then raise whatever Spectre you want. Next, I want to talk a little bit about the Animate Guardian. So there's a few options here. There's some pieces of gear that you'll want to use regardless. So Dying Breath, Iron Staff, this one's pretty obvious. This is nearby allies gain increased damage, and nearby enemies have increased effective curses on them, so that's really great. Lyric Cast Festival Mask, you and nearby allies gain 50% increased damage, which is really good. And then Wind Scream. So here's here's where you have some options. So I've found that for Anime Guardian, Asnath's Gentle Touch and Wind Scream is amazing, and this was Baylor Mage's idea. So Asnath's Gentle Touch, the way it works is it curses enemies with temporal chance on hit, and then enemies near corpses affected by your curses are blinded, and enemies killed near corpses affected by your curses explode, dealing 3% of their life as physical damage. And then Wind Scream is you can apply additional curse. Now, the you can apply additional curse applies to your animate guardian. So the way curse limits work between players and animate guardians is whoever hits it, their limit applies. So if your animate guardian had a limit of one and you have a limit of one, then what would happen is you would be cursing an enemy, the animate guardian would hit it and curse it with its curse, taking away yours. And then you would hit it, it would hit it, and so on and so forth. So you would only ever get one curse. So by using, you can apply additional curse for your animate guardian, even though you only have a single limit, you can curse an enemy, the animate guardian will hit it and apply its two curse limit, which will apply temporal chance on top of what you already have on it. And this is pretty nice because the animate guardian is attacking really fast, so even if you refresh your own curse, it will take away temporal chance from the animate guardian, but he'll just put it right back on. And you probably noticed in the showcase I was just blowing up huge packs of monsters, and that was occurring due in large part to the Anime Guardian and Asnath's Gentle Touch and Windscreen Boots. So this is a really powerful combo, and the build feels extremely good with it, especially for Expedition. But just don't let your Anime Guardian get caught in the middle of your Expedition, or he will get absolutely deleted. Uh, for the body armor, you have a few options. So I gave my anime guardian just a cheap astral plate with very high armor and very high life, just because I'm I'm kind of being cheap. So another option is doppelganger's guys. So doppelganger's guys is pretty expensive. The first one I bought only cost 70 chaos, but the last time I checked, it was about 120 chaos. So they've definitely gone up since then, and this makes your anime guardian very tanky. It's 40% less physical and cast damage taken while sane, and regenerate 10% life over one second when hit while sane. And sane is the default status, so that's what your animate guardian will be in. So every time he gets hit, he's going to regenerate 10% life, which is massive. However, I still managed to get him killed even with this item, and so I haven't bothered replacing it. Uh, another option is Garby the Ephemeral. This will make you more tanky. Nearby allies' action speed cannot be modified below base value. That's really good. And the big one is nearby enemies cannot deal critical strikes. So that means as long as you're next to your anime guardian, which is always because you have anime guardian linked to meat shield, you will never take a critical strike, which means you'll be a lot more tanky just from that. So for my passive tree, the setup is pretty much the same as everybody's using, with the exception of the cluster jewel. So what I opted for here is a 
9 passive. I really wanted a bigger one. I wanted like a 12 passive. If you can get a 12 passive, that's great. I want a 12 passive with minions have increased attack and cast speed, and then skills have 35% increased effect. What this gives you is, instead of 10% damage and 3% attack and cast speed, you get 13% damage and 4% increased attack and cast speed, which is massive. Of course, I do have Rotten Claws on this notable, which is a pointless notable, so I haven't bothered allocating that. And the final big upgrade I made to my build just today is I was able to remove my chance to poison gem. So remember I told you I had 40% chance to poison gem, plus Dark and Synth Round with two jewels in that, and then another jewel on the tree, and that made 100. So what I did instead is I ditched the chance to poison gem, so now I start at zero. Because prices have fallen so much in Darkness Enthroned, I now have a 97% increased effect of Socket Abyss Jewels. And in here, I have two 15% chance to poison. So 30 times 1.97 equals 59. So I'm at 59% chance to poison just from this belt. And then, so now I just have to come up with another 41%. So I got one jewel with 14% chance to poison, another jewel with 14% chance to poison, and then I have a third one with 14% chance to poison. 42 plus 59 is 101, and I am 100% chance to poison now, without a chance to poison gem. And then what I can replace that gem with is Void Manipulation. This ended up resulting in about a 15% damage increase from my already pretty high DPS, so that felt really good. The only possible upgrade left for jewels is Amanamu's Gaze. It's just extremely expensive right now, and I just can't afford it. But when I do, I'm level 96, so if I can get to like level 99, I'll take these two strength points and then this socket, and I will put it right in there. So overall, the build is feeling really good now, and it wasn't super expensive. It's, it's not too bad, especially with Sanctum back on the menu. Sanctum is extremely profitable. The tombs are still very cheap, maybe... 10 to 15 chaos for a level 81 to 83 one, uh, less if you go lower. And you can usually expect to make between 1 and 3 divine per run, uh, plus you know 1 to 3 divine, just, just raw divines, and then probably another 50 to 80 chaos of other stuff. And so Sanctum is extremely profitable right now. Uh, besides that, I'm also getting and selling essences, and I'm just doing imitation farming. So my my atlas tree that I have right now is a wandering path tree, which is notable atlas passive skills grant nothing, and 100% increased effect to small atlas passives. So I take all the, all the quantity passives, I take all the map duplication passives, and I take enough... Uh, adjacent map drop chance to make sure that I get a hundred percent chance for one monster to drop a connected map. And then for my favorite maps I'm running Beach and Strand because they're right next to one another and so they just constantly just keep dropping. Every map I run I get another like three to four maps and I just run that. So I have an entire tab full of just maps and I just I just put them in, I run them fast, I just move on to the next one. Overall I highly recommend this build so if this is something that you want to try out I'm going to leave the POB in the description. It, this is not a build that I created from scratch. This is mostly Baylor Mage's build. I did make a couple modifications. I'm using Void Manipulation and 100% Chance to Poison without the gem. And then I did a different Cluster Jewel and a couple different passives. But for the most part, it's the same build. It's probably 98% what everybody else is playing for Summoner Agent Spirits. So it's definitely going to work. Hopefully everyone's league start is going great. And I hope to catch you on a future video. Take care. Phenomenon, stacking cheese like it's Parmesan. Eight different flows call me Akamam. I'm moving fast like the Autobahn, and I'm in.